Okay, welcome back to our third lecture on networks and distributed systems. Let's pick up where we left off in the last lesson. Although DSL and cable networks currently represent most of the residential broadband access in the United States, an up-and-coming technology that promises even higher speeds is the deployment of fiber to the home. For example, AT&T has been rapidly expanding their fiber optic network, and many users are now enjoying the benefits of their UVerse services. The other internet service providers are doing the same thing. Verizon has been particularly aggressive with fiber with its FIOS service. The simplest optical distribution network is called direct fiber with one fiber leaving the central office for each home. More commonly, each fiber leaving the central office is shared by many homes. It's not until the fiber actually gets close to the house that it's split into individual customer-specific fibers. There are two competing optical distribution network architectures that perform this splitting. Active Optical Networks, AONs, and passive optical networks, PONs. AON is essentially switched Ethernet. We'll examine these architectures later. Two other access network technologies are also used to provide internet access to the home. In locations where DSL, cable, and fiber are not available, a satellite link can be used to connect a residence to the internet at speeds of more than one megabit per second. Starband and HughesNet are two such satellite access providers. Another access network technology, dial-up access, which is over traditional phone lines, is based on the same model as DSL. Home modems connect over a phone line to a modem at the ISP. Compared to DSL and other broadband networks, dial-up access is exceedingly slow at 56 kilobits per second according to your authors. Your facilitator first started network communication using a 300 baud modem. That's like 300 bits per second but not quite the same. 300 baud or 300 bits per second they did have one thing in common. They were slow. On corporate and university campuses and increasingly on home settings, a local area network, LAN, is used to connect an end system to the edge router. Although there are many types of LAN technologies, Ethernet is by far the most prevalent access technology in corporate, university, and home networks. Ethernet users use twisted pair copper wire to connect to an Ethernet switch. The Ethernet switch, or a network of interconnected Ethernet switches, is then in turn connected to the larger Internet. With Ethernet access, users typically have 1 gigabit per second access to the Ethernet switch, whereas servers may have 10 gigabit per second access. Increasingly, however, people are accessing the Internet wirelessly from laptops, smartphones, tablets, and other devices. In wireless LAN settings, wireless users transmit and receive packets to and from an access point that is connected to the enterprise's network via a wired Ethernet, which is in turn connected to the wired Internet. A lot of people refer to that access point as a wireless modem, but the proper term is uh, access point. A wireless LAN user must typically be within about 30 feet or so of the access point. Wireless LAN access based on IEEE 802.11 technology known as Wi-Fi is now almost everywhere. Universities, business offices, cafes, airports, homes, even on airplanes. While Ethernet and Wi-Fi access networks were originally found in corporate and university networks, they've recently become relatively common components of home networks. 
Increasingly, such devices as iPhones and Android devices are being used to send email and surf the web, tweet, search Facebook, download music while on the run. These devices employ the same wireless infrastructure used for cellular telephony to send and receive packets through a base station that is operated by the cellular network provider. Unlike Wi-Fi, a user need only be within a few miles as opposed to a few feet of the base station. We've been talking about some of the most important network access technologies in the Internet. As we've done so, we also mentioned the physical media being used. For example, we said that hybrid fiber cable uses a combination of fiber cable and coaxial cable. And we also said that DSL and Ethernet use copper wire in a twisted pair. And we've said that mobile access networks use the radio spectrum. Remember that we discovered that a message that is sent from one host to another must be broken into multiple packets. These packets, however, are made up of some number of individual bits, a bit being a signal that represents either a 1 or a 0. We'll talk about how the bits are bundled into packets later. Those bits are transmitted across the medium one at a time. Consider a bit traveling from one end system through a series of links and routers to another end system. The source end system first transmits the bit, and shortly thereafter that the first router in the series receives the bit. The first router then transmits the bit, and shortly thereafter the second router receives the bit, and so on until the bit finally reaches the destination host. Therefore, the bit, when traveling from source to destination, passes through a series of transmitter-receiver pairs. For each transmitter-receiver pair, the bit is sent by propagating electrical magnetic waves or optical pulses across a physical medium. Here is an example of the most common access network technology in use today. The router you see here, which is represented by that oval symbol with a plus, looks like a plus in it, is the source access to the internet for this small local area network. If you look at it, the small local area network looks like it has an access point attached to it, which is connected to the switch, which in turn is connected to the ethernet. That wireless access point has three laptops. And then I see that there are four other desktops connected directly to the switch. And these are all on the access network, such as your home or the university. And the, that router represents the first hop or first connection to the internet. The physical medium can take many shapes and forms and does not have to be of the same type for each transmitter receiver pair along the path. Examples of physical media include twisted pair copper wire, coaxial cable, multimode fiber optic cable, terrestrial radio spectrum, and satellite radio spectrum. Physical media fall into two categories, guided media and unguided media. With guided media, the waves are guided along a solid medium such as a fiber optic cable or a twisted pair of copper wire or coaxial cable. With unguided media, the waves propagate in the atmosphere or in outer space, such as in a wireless LAN or a digital satellite channel. The least and most commonly used guided transmission medium is twisted pair of copper wire. For over a hundred years it's been used by telephone networks. In fact, more than 99% of the wired connections from the telephone headset to the local telephone switch use twisted pair copper wire. 
twisted pair consists of two insulated copper wires, each about one millimeter thick, arranged in a regular spiral pattern. The wires are twisted together to reduce the electrical interference from similar pairs close by. That interference is called crosstalk. Typically, a number of pairs are bundled together in a cable by wrapping the pairs in a protective shield. A wire pair constitutes a single communication link. Unshielded twisted pair, UTP, is commonly used for computer networks within a building, that is for LANs. Data rates for LANs using twisted pair today range from 10 megabits to 10 gigabits. The data rates can, that can be achieved depend on the thickness of the wire and the distance between the sender and receiver. When fiber optic technology emerged in the 1980s, some people even felt that fiber optic technology would completely replace twisted pair. However, modern twisted pair technology is much, much cheaper than fiber optic cable and can achieve data rates of 10 gigabits per for distances up to 100 meters. However, Modern twisted pair technology is much cheaper than fiber optic cable and can achieve data rates of 10 gigabits per second for distances up to 100 meters. In the end, twisted pair has emerged as the dominant solution for high speed local area networking. Well, that's a load for this lesson, so why don't we stop here, take a break, and after you've completed whatever requirements you have waiting for you. Come on back and we'll do the next lesson.